Arno Tershur is with us at Intel Invest. Arno, it's been what about three, four months. Uh, great to have you back. Thank you, Dale. Great How are you, back. my tree? More your brother. How are things going with you? I'm uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a look at a few things that you're thinking about on your radar and you share your screen. Yes, I will share my screen. Give me one second. There we go. Can you see it? Got it. Okay. So S&P. Awesome. Uh, yes. If you could raise it just a little bit. Um, there we go. It's more right. in the... It's, there you it's go. Uh, on a large... Um, that's me. Okay. Make it a little so, bit smaller. You know, or... just to review, um, when did the bull case for rally to new highs... Uh, become negated for you based upon your Elliott work? Well, that was not too long after our interview. Um, I can um, show you actually that I posted a couple of days later on uh, some websites. You don't have I to show me, uh, you know, look, it's an over, it's an evolving thing. Yes. And, uh, you know, uh, W.D. Gann said, if you don't learn how to change your mind, you won't have any change left. But, uh, you know, I was <laughs> the same so way. I That's was leaning so the same way. Uh, I mm -hmm. thought there was a possibility. But now, uh, to me, you know, uh, I think best case is a bear market rally. But you have a pretty good rally setting up here. Yeah, this is an alternative uh, count. Uh, the screen started here. My preferred count, I'm going to switch here to the NASDAQ uh, 100. Um, it's, a, it's a little... Um, busy chart but you're uh, looking here at my preferred path is this green in th in, with the three the four and the five and then another four and then another five to complete a larger i believe a wave wow. to the downside the alternative so right this is edit wave you always have your preferred version and there's always an alternative version um, if you are an objective honest right. edit wave or editition you present the two options to your readers, to your followers, to your clients, and then you let the market decide which one it will take with, of course, always a preferred option based on other analysis or, or what you see. So preferred option is the green path. And then the red path is an alternative option where we are going to bottom reasonably soon at around the June lows. We can overshoot them a little bit. And then we kind of go back again to the August highs before we get a another big leg lower. This would be a quite complex correction of the uh, initial move we had down from the all-time high, which was made for the NASDAQ in November into June. Yeah. And then you, what we call this would then be a flat correction, a irregular flat. So you get three waves up, uh, three waves down, red A, red B, red C, or uh, that would be, uh, then be the red. So let me ask you as a, as a as an elitician, and I know yes. you look at other markets and relationships. Yes. Um, and even though this is your preferred count, um, yes. if they turn, if the dollar turns, and yields are peaking in here, yes. will that make your alternate count more likely with the yes. dollar with the dollar selling off and yields of coming course. off? Okay. Yes, of course. Yes. And so do you have a uh, view on whether we're into some type of blow off stage? in the dollar and yields uh, that that is a possibility from here or I'm off my yes. rocker? No, no. <laughs> uh, I not, mean, you're, you're am I the boy who off. cried wolf here? Well, no, you're, no, you're not. Wolf. Uh, it's like, <laughs> it's like, a plan, it's like yeah. plan, plan B said, you know, it's uh, better to be roughly right than uh, actively wrong. Um, so, that, that, of course, all plays, right? And there's so many right. facets to the market. Um, all of those go in, into price and, and what price is going to do. So I, I don't always look at all those variables because price is baked them in already. There are, you know, of course, a yeah. million more variables than just those two, but those, of course, very big players. I kind of look at them from a sideline. Um, I follow other people that know a lot more about it, you know, just like the previous speakers on, on the currencies than I do. Um, you know, I have only so much bandwidth. Um, just tracking the five major uh, indexes in the United States is, is already uh, hard enough. Um, yeah. Add then a couple of stocks like Tesla, Apple. Um, I'm also tracking, of course, the cryptocurrencies, Ethereum, Bitcoin. And, you know, before you know it, the day is over. And I haven't even looked at uh, 
what uh, Powell or Yellen said, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which also well, important. I, I mean, what's happening in FX uh, is disorderly and historic. I mean, there are levels that have, we haven't seen for 20 years and historic low for cable. Um, I, I know yep. that being an S&P trader, people are, uh, it, it, is it hard for you to trade your preferred count with so many people on the same side of your opinion? Um, no, not really. Um, no, okay. um, it's maybe something we can touch on. I, I, I prepared a little bit of a presentation about retail trading. Uh, oh, cool. Um, All right, I'm going to stop in Attitude, so to say, and uh, we can maybe go over it instead of kind of uh, always go okay. over what the market is going to do, it, you know, time permitted. But uh, I, I know a lot of, of course, listeners and viewers want to see where, where we think things are going. But for me, the preferred path is lower. I think okay. the futures are a little bit lower again. And now um, I think we're going to get to this crossroads. Uh, are we going to decide to go to about 9,500 on the NASDAQ 100? Or are we going to stall um, somewhere around the June lows, maybe a little bit of overshoot? Let's say we stall at around 10,000 and then we shoot back up. And then people can say, you know, hey, I can trade this because you say it's either going to go up or down. Yes, that is the market. The market is probabilistic in nature. Uh, but if you're, for example, short, you're going to use those levels where we say, you know, if it goes above a certain level, then we know it's not going to go lower. You can use it as a stop or a stop loss, right? Right. But that's manage the nature of the other ones. Manage your position. The only right. thing you can do is manage your position. I cannot manage the market. If it were up to me, I will let the market rally because I like bull markets better than bear markets. <laughs> but you ever tried um, the uh, ever tried the cursor technique? What is that deal? Well, you put your mouse, you put the cursor on your chart, and then just drag it in the direction you want the market to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> After the clip, do it only on your demo account. But anyway. Okay, sure. Sure will do. <laughs> All right. So seriously, um, uh, the S&Ps, okay, so, you know, maybe we get... Uh, yeah, like so, you know, for the S&P 500, also here, I'm starting to look here at what I call a super cycle three top, which is a top of the same degree as we saw in uh, the late 1920s. Wow. Um, yeah, and this means we're in a super cycle four wave, which is very uh, complex and, and overlapping and uh, annoying uh, going forward. It's going to be a lot of sideways in the bigger picture. I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, okay. Here I have a slight alternative version to what I presented to the uh, NASDAQ here. I just look at the A wave, and here we have a B wave, and now we have a C wave. I can interpret, right? The LA wave is an interpretation of the price action. Um, till the interpretation is proven wrong or right. Uh, so you can always interpret it in, in several ways. Um, and that's why they always say, if you have 10 analyticians in one room with one chart, you will get 10 different opinions. And that is fine. One of them eventually will prevail as long as you're aware of them. So, so here, your line in the sand is what, about 3,900, 3,920? I would say here about 3,820. Uh, um, if 38. we start rallying, yeah, if we start rallying above it, then I'm okay. going to look here for this larger bounce where, where we started Got the it. presentation with for interview. Uh, That's a very is, important uh, area. Yeah. Why Thank is that? Because that. Oh, you're welcome. Because then this impulse to the downside cannot happen anymore. Uh, in an impulse, as you may know, right, the, the, yeah. the fourth wave cannot overlap with the first wave. And the third wave needs to be the longest. Those are the two primary rules of that wave. Plus the fact okay. that the second second wave here in this Roman numeral two or this green two can never go beyond the start of the first wave. So we have wave one, wave two, and then one of three, two of three. And the market now needs to prove if we're going to get this path. So right, this option is on the table. So what you do is you analyze the markets. You study, of course, every wave, and you apply that study to the market, and you're going to track it. Is this going to fill itself in? This potential is in the chart. But this potential will be off the chart if we're going to reverse hard. So yes, can the market go back up? Of course it can. Can it go sideways? Yes, it can. But it's up to me to says, say, what is the most likely path? And it's still lower. There's just many ways to look at it. It's lower. But, you know, maybe Powell will open his mouth and say, we're going to do uh, more of whatever we're going to do or less of whatever we're doing. Then the market will reverse. And then we have a nice other option on the table. 
but we're going to sit and wait for now. I know the preferred path is lower with some bounces along the way till the market yeah. pushes me wrong. That's, I mean, that's, and it's beautiful because you have absolute clear if then scenarios. And for trading, that's all you need to know. If, you know, then I do this. And that, Why that's you're scary. in, uh, where you're wrong, and yes. what you're looking for when you're right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. So, you know, back in June, I think it was, um, Early June, we had the, our presentation, and the market right. kept dropping. I think back then, uh, back then, well, you're so looking I was for, look yeah, you're looking for a buy back there. Yeah, I was looking for a buy around thirty-seven fifty. I remember I was looking at the webcast yesterday uh, that I held. But I said thirty-seven fifty. Well, we got to about thirty-six forty, right? So yeah. it's not a bad shot, um, no. you know. And if you're then a retail investor, you, you'll tell me that I'm wrong. I don't know, I don't understand why that would be. But then I was looking already, um, let's hear, uh, see here on a, a bullish wedge that was forming. I published this on investing.com. If you want to laugh, you should always read the comments from the trolls. Uh, it's absolutely hilarious. Um, it's really I know, I silly. It. <laughs> you got it too. But I was looking already here. <laughs> in, this was published, uh, let's see here, June 28th. Uh, so June 28th, I said, we have this potential wedge for me. If we break out, we're going to target, well, let's zoom in, to about 4365, 4530. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's the same here for the NASDAQ 100. So the other wave count will kind of complete um, yeah. here in June. And I said, we can target as high as 15,000 plus. That's the, that's the potential that's in the chart because it's, it's a bullish wedge. I mean, it was staring you absolutely in the face. Uh, <laughs> and now what, what did we get on the NASDAQ 100? We stalled at about 13,800. It didn't reach its full potential. It happens, right? But you know, yeah. once this, once this uh, potential pattern completes, we will get a rally. And we got a breakout, a retest, fantastic rally. Same for the S&P 500. Uh, let me see here. So, you know, we rallied to about 43... 50 almost, right? That was when that, the 200 day moving average came in there. It looked almost too easy yes. up there to me. Yes, it did. How about uh, you? It, it did. I don't have them on the charts. So on, I was looking one. for a, just a pullback and a higher low uh, at that ah, time. At okay. that time up there. Yes. Yeah. And that didn't happen. No, it didn't happen. Uh, we got a retest of the 200 day moving average, and that is quite uh, bearish. And um, I've been tracking a lot of bullish uh, breath signals. I, I don't have them here on the charts, but pretty much none of them worked. The, those that normally work in a bull market where you see a breath thrust, uh, extreme yeah. oversold conditions, all those things, um, all we got was pretty much a counter trend rally. And we continue to pretty much rally in um, counter trend patterns, which means three waves up. And we continue to move in impulse patterns lower, which is a motive. So yeah. the motive of the market currently is down. So after our interview, you know, I kind of reassessed the charts. And this is what I'm an uh, author on the FX Empire. And um, I was looking here at the big picture for the Dow Jones. And um, yeah, let's see if I can open this chart. Yeah. And decided that, uh, you know, we might actually be in this large super cycle four wave. So if we go back to Dow Jones all the way to the 1920s, we have the uh, super cycle one top, and then we had a zigzag cycle, super cycle two. We had a zigzag uh, cycle two in the 1942 low. Uh, believe it or not, right? The market rallied uh, most of the Second World War, interesting enough. And um, then we had a zigzag primary two, and then all the other fourth waves were pretty much irregular expanded flats, meaning the B wave will make an all time high. And the fourth wave will go below the end of the A wave. So you see it here, this whole 1960s, 1970s uh, parade <laughs> pretty much was a sideways mess. This was uh, almost a decade and a half of going nowhere for the markets, right? It is yeah. uh, down, up, down, up, down. I mean, and that's most likely what we're looking at. So if I extrapolate all these fourth waves that we had, and we're in the super cycle fourth wave, I was looking here for an A, a B, a C. And then this type of path. I'm sorry, I can't expand the, the chart any bigger. And that is so far um, filling in quite nicely. So I published this uh, in uh, June. And so far, it's filling in quite nicely. So then I'm looking here for this blue A wave. 
um, as you can see here, then we get a larger bounce, uh, which I pretty much have also here, right? And, um, and, and then it should be down again. But the thing is with a, a regular, what we call flat, the B wave, as we saw here in 2009, as we saw here in 1970s, um, as we saw here actually in 2015, um, which was also um, a fourth wave, will make a new all-time high. And that way we can still reach the 5,500 um, in the S&P 500. It is a number that I think the market still has a, uh, what do you say? Uh, from <laughs> a from meeting here with. or from here or after your oh, preferred Oh, way, out. way further down, down the line. We, that's okay. probably yeah. going to be uh, many years down the line. The super cycle four wave can yeah. last uh, many, many years. It goes maybe into the 30s. A couple 19th. of generations. Oh, 2030s, sorry. I'm 100 years behind. 20 years. <laughs> That could yeah. last 20 years. If you look here at this primary four wave, this lasted yeah, um, about 10 years. Yeah. The super cycle four wave also lasted 10 years. Or cycle four, sorry, from okay. 2000 to 2009. So 10 years, yeah, that's fine. So that might be a ways to go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, now, I'm not a market timer, uh, yeah. but, you know, if we just use logical analysis. So I, I kind of gave up on the fact that we're in a bull market. Um also, like the internals, right? Now, if you see how, for example, large stocks like Netflix, Facebook, uh, and, and other stocks are, are completely being decimated, PayPal, and I don't know which other large companies are completely being decimated, never seen since the 2009 low, it tells me something else is going on. Inflation, the Federal Reserve. Uh, the, how about a dollar, bond market crash? Bond I, I market mean, we're, crashing. Everyone's talking about this bear market in stocks, but the bear market in bonds no, it's, puts it's, it to shame. Yeah, puts it to shame. So these things we've not seen um, since 2009. So it does start to tell us something else is going on. And uh, this might explain it. And uh, the ultimate low for this super cycle four wave uh, can be anywhere between uh, you know, 1,500 or 1,000 on S&P 500. But I don't want to 1, go that 1,500 and what? And a thousand somewhere around. Okay, there. all right. But I don't want to go that far yet. It, it really, of yeah. course, requires a lot more data. But so far, as you can see, we have uh, this black A, black B, which this was published in June. I was looking for, um, so that's filled in quite nice. I published it here, and then the B wave. So now we should be in this C wave. Um, so far, it's following along quite nicely. I think the futures are a little bit down again, and we should kind of machinate our way lower. Now, again, these are what we call ideal Fibonacci-based target zones, right? Uh, as you know, uh, Fibonacci is, of course, important on where third, fourth, and fifth waves should ideally textbook-wise, but the market reserves the right to do it a little bit different. It doesn't have to. Um, and this is sometimes where people get hung up on, uh, oh, you know, you're wrong. Well, you know, as long as the third wave is not the shortest, and as long as the fourth wave doesn't overlap with the first wave, um, the market can pretty much do whatever it wants. So, you know, with that, I, I kind of made this little presentation here on uh, retail trader issues. I see a lot of issues. I honestly get once a week pretty much an, an email from somebody who is underwater uh, multi $10,000 uh, on bad trades. They, they followed some bear, they followed bull, or uh, problem is, you know, they bought too high, still not selling, um, and then I, I kind of have to clean up the mess. Gladly so. Um, but then I realized most of these bad trades are because of these in unrealistic expectations that a lot of people have. Because um, you know, all I can do here is right where we just forecast it on what, what I'm seeing in the charts. But if it's not right between your ears, if you have these unrealistic expectations, it doesn't matter what I say or how good my work is. I can be right 10 out of 10 times. But if you have these unrealistic expectations, um, your trading will not be going well. and. Um, you'll start blaming other people for your losses, right? <laughs> so well, then you you'll, go, if you do that, you'll never grow. Uh, exactly. And the point and, is and, to grow from uh, adversity, not yes. to, and to own it and be responsible yes. for your own trading. decisions and not say, I got burned by this market. I'll never trade it again. It wasn't the market. It was you. It was, of course, you know, yeah, um, okay. are all these yeah. Wall Street firms, are they going to close all their doors because they had a couple of bad trades? Of course not. <laughs> That's yeah. not how it works. And um, so, you know, this is about unrealistic expectations. This is not the 
bash retail traders or any trader for that matter. It's just no, kind I'm of sure had, uh, there are hedge fund uh, guys, uh, big oh. money guys that have unrealistic expectations. Of course, that there's there's human uh, as know, we are, like uh, 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 Scar, like Scarmucci. Uh, with his Bitcoin uh, positions, that he had to right. shut his firm down, but now right. he, now he's reopening one. So the difference right. between guys like that and us is they can make more than one mistake. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's cool. a one mistake business uh, for a lot of people. Don't make yeah. it. No, and and it's nice to to make mistakes with other people's money. Um, that doesn't hurt as much either. But when it's your yeah. own money, if you let go of these unrealistic <laughs> expectations and become professional and, and and emotionally detached, it will go a lot better. So yeah, I made this long list when I started with, and it's already down to sixteen type of uh, unrealistic expectations. You know, or like Kathy Wood from Arc Fund, right? Also, her yeah. you can see how her thinking has affected the fund. Um, the first thing is that a lot of people think that instantly make money in the markets. That's of course ridiculous. It takes many years to become a proficient trader. Uh, follow Mark Minervini on, on Twitter, and he, he, he will say it every single day, pretty much, that it took him ten years bef before it became profitable. <laughs> That's how long it takes. Yeah. And I, I get going, an average answer of four. Four years. Yeah, that yeah. seems. Yeah. yeah, that seems quite quick. But that's with the stamina, discipline. Uh, it will get you there, I'm sure. And then, you know, people think there are always these market gurus who know everything, every move all the time. Well, nobody does, right? Uh, I certainly don't. Um, and that also leads to unrealistic expectations. So it's, it's a long list here that viewers can, can look at. And of course, no patience and switching between uh, strategies all the time that uh, after a couple of loss, losing trades, giving up, like, oh, it doesn't work. Well, stick with it, stick with it. Uh, you have no plan, you know, you're opinionated. And at last but not least, people treat it like a hobby. Right? If you think you're going to make money instantly in the market, if you treat it like a hobby, oh, I'm just doing it on the side. You're going to get paid like a hobby. Hobbies cost money, right? You treat it Good as one. a business, business make money. So you have to be treating it as a business. Like I said, the Wall Street firms don't give up after a few losing trades. And of course, the big pet peeve is no stop losses, right? Especially in the bear market, uh, you know, got to have stop losses. And, um, well, you know, thanks for reminding me of everything I've done <laughs> and everything uh, I've seen. Okay, so, charged too. Right. Yes. yes. And, and, uh, and so, it's you know, I, I think that uh, you're a good teacher. Or not. Oh, thank you. And it's difficult. Trading is one of it the takes, most difficult. It takes patience to teach. It, takes, it, it Also, it does. Yes. More and, than to uh, trade, actually, for me. It takes more patience. Also, a Van yeah, Morrison waiting. song. <laughs> uh, yes it is I, you know I, about I, him having to say something again and again and again um <laughs> repeat, repeat, what, repeat what's the best way for people to keep up with uh you know your counts and uh as things evolve yeah uh, so there are many in, ways to to go uh, about um uh, you can do it the the, the easy and, and cheap way if you so said you can follow me on fx empire uh i'm on you can uh, type in my name and you'll find me probably author on fx empire um, or on uh, investing.com. Again, if you want to read the silly comments by uh, trolls, uh, please go ahead. I mean, it's, it's absolutely hilarious. Uh, uh, sorry, part of my French. Stupid. And your, so and your website? Stupid. And you can go to my website. You can sign up there. So there, there are many uh, services I provide. Um, there's one where I do what I call the major markets trading. Uh, I give daily updates to live webcasts per week three written email updates per, per uh, week, um, just quick, you know, brief to the point on, you know, price levels to watch. And um, you can sign up for those. And then you pretty much have to follow how I analyze the markets and use that for your own trade. Now, if you're new or, or you know, want to do it uh, a little easier, I have this make major market trading alerts. Um, you'll get a email every day about 10 15 minutes before the markets close these are based on my algorithms and they will tell you buy sell or hold any etf uh that trades the, the major markets uh, the spy the qqqs um whatever uh, markets right the, the semi okay, or no well and, you uh, know i'm a fan and uh rooting for you and yeah. uh, your team and everyone you work for so thank you you know thank hope you. you have a hope you have a great fall trading season 
yeah, it should go well. Uh, this trading alert service has been going great because we trade, of course, both the long and, and the short version of the market, so to say. Uh, so we're, we're doing really well. Um, and it's very easy trading, even if you're new, especially if you're new to trading. You know, this might be a good way to, to learn the, 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 the discipline of trading, when to buy, when to sell, when to sit on your hands, for example. We've been sitting on our hands sometimes quite a lot, waiting for a good setup. And if you wait for a good setup, just like we talked about, then you know you get a good trade. And there will be losing yeah. trades along the way. No sure. system is perfect. I'm not perfect, but that's okay. And that's that's sometimes the fun uh, as well. Great surfers don't trade. try and catch every wave. No, no, no. No, when not to go, right? <laughs> sometimes they're just sitting on their board paddling around. Yes. Oh, yeah. Waiting yeah, for been, the setup. Yeah. So. Uh, no, not that I was ever a great surfer. I used to pearl a lot, though. No. Um, well, well, thank, thank you, Arno. Great yeah, to catch you, up you, with you. You're welcome, Seth. Thank you for having me, Dale. Uh, it was a wonderful uh, 30 minutes to be able to share some of my work. It, it flew. And appreciate your giving nature of sharing it with us today, buddy. You're welcome. So, uh, Arno Tershur, everyone. And uh, follow him. Arno's... Uh, uh, very good elitician tactician as you can tell he knows psychology that hurts people so <laughs> so Including he, myself. he just read he read my journal publicly during this interview so uh, my trading journal let's say i did this i averaged out i tried to break even i pulled my stop because it was too close uh, all those things so uh good hunting thank Arno, you and, thank you uh, you're very welcome. And uh, everyone, thanks for your attention. You can join the team in 15 minutes on the morning edge. And remember, whatever you're trading, how much you're trading, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Adios. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.